Okay, so let's see how strong your basic algebra skills are by taking on this problem right here without the aid of a calculator. And what is the problem? Well, the problem is the following. We have this algebraic or variable expression and it's parentheses 4x, uh, 4xy plus y minus 8x and parentheses divided by xy. And we want to evaluate this for the values x equals 1 and y is equal to negative 2. So this kind of question on a test or textbook would be something like evaluate the expression for the following values. Again, try to do this without the aid of a calculator because, um, you know, really that is going to kind of, you know, check your understanding for a lot of basic math and algebra skills that you definitely need to know. All right, so that is the question. And if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then of course, I'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need assistance in learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so pretty straightforward problem here. Again, we want to evaluate this variable or algebraic expression for these values. I'll tell you what this word evaluate means in just one second, but hopefully it's pretty obvious what to do. And let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct answer is the following. It is 36. Okay, so this again is our problem, and we want to evaluate this expression for these values. So x is equal to 1 and y is equal to negative 2. What does this uh, word evaluate mean? Well, it means that we're going to replace all these x and y's uh, with these respective values. So anytime we see an x, we're going to replace that with a 1. And every time we see a y, we're going to replace this with a uh, negative 2. And then all this right here is going to become one big numeric expression. And you're going to need to understand PEMDAS which is the uh, correct order of operations uh, in order to simplify this problem. So there's a lot to kind of cover here. So if you didn't get this right, you know, chances are you might have made a little um, arithmetic mistake. No big deal. But uh, I'll give you some suggestions here if you really need to improve in this stuff. But anyways, if you got this right, that is fantastic. I got to give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100%. And multiple stars so you can tell your friends and family that indeed at least you are a certified professional expert in basic algebra they may not be that impressed with that but i bet you if you gave them this problem uh, they couldn't figure it out like you did but let's go ahead and get into this right now and again uh, what we want to do is evaluate right Eva this is a huge topic in basic math and anytime we evaluate any expression or basic algebra rather uh, you want to use parentheses to plug in your values. Okay, this is a big, big problem. A lot of students just plug in uh, their values like this. I'm like, okay, 4, x is 1, so that would be 4 times 1, y is negative 2, the put negative 2 there, plus y, that's another negative 2. You see, they're, they're put, plugging in values without parentheses. That is not a good habit to get in. You want to use parentheses for a number of different reasons. It will help you avoid making uh, very common mistakes with positive and negative numbers. So the key to doing this problem uh, beyond you know understanding the concepts like the order of operations, etc., is really managing the information. And you got to be as neat as possible and just take it one step at a time. And if you do that, then you're going to definitely increase your probability of getting this right. Okay, so first things first, we're going to go ahead and replace all the x and y's that we see here with these respective values 1 and negative 2. And you can see that work done right here. Now, when you do this problem or a problem like this in real life on a test, quiz, exam, homework, doesn't make a difference. What you want to do is once you plugged in everything, don't, don't just start. Be like, okay, I'm so happy. I'm ready to solve this problem. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it like that. No, no, you got to slow down because here is another major problem that students make. They'll plug in information, even with parentheses, but they'll oftentimes plug in the wrong number for something. That's a very common uh, mistake. So don't start this problem in earnest until you double and triple check that, in fact, you got everything plugged in because it's easier to correct something here 
than versus, you know, doing a bunch of work and be like, oh my goodness, I plugged in the wrong values. Now you got to go up, fix these values and start again. Okay. So again, I'm just telling you things that I've learned painfully over several decades. Of course, um, you know, I've had the best of math students make these uh, kind of mistakes. So just be careful. Okay. So we got everything plugged in correctly. And now we can kind of start off and go to the races by uh, thinking about the order of operations. So uh, this is a big, big topic. I'm not I'm, I'm going to get fully into the order of operations. I will kind of list it up here. Uh, again, this is PEMDAS. I'll just quickly review it. But if you want to know more about the order of operations, I have a ton of additional videos on this um, on uh, my YouTube channels. I'll also give you some course recommendations um, as we kind of get into this video. But basically, the order of operations is the uh, the correct order that we have to do this problem. So P is parentheses. We got to do everything in parentheses, and we have to look for these larger parentheses. So we're gonna have to focus on all this stuff in here. And then uh, you know, this is again, I'm kind of rushing through in a full explanation. I just don't want to make this video too long. Uh, e is powers or exponents. So we're kind of this is a checklist that goes from left to right. M and D are a group. We're gonna do multiplication or division, whatever we see first from left to right. And then A and S is addition or subtraction, whatever we see first from left to right. Tons of students make mistakes when it comes to the order of operations. So, you know, um, you know, I apologize for kind of rushing through this, but uh, if you are not really understanding what I'm doing here, please review the order of operations. This is like basic math. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't understand the basics as well as they think. Okay, so we have a lot of parentheses. Now these parentheses right here are just the values that we plugged in, okay? But there's nothing uh, mathematically to do inside of those parentheses. In other words, there's no math operations to do, but we do have this uh, big set of parentheses right here, okay? So we're gonna focus our attention on doing this and so basically we have like problems within problems okay so here we go so we have our parentheses and now what do we have right here well we have multiplication here and we have multiplication here so we're just going to uh, uh, do multiplication whatever we see first from left to right so we got four times one times negative two again I'm hoping that you understand positive and negative numbers but the correct answer is negative eight. All right, so four times one times negative two is negative eight. Again, we wanna do this problem without the eight of a calculator, plus negative two minus eight times one, which of course will be eight. We'll do that in just one second. Divided by one divided by negative two, or one times uh, negative two, okay? So we'll get to all this one step at a time. Take it nice and easy for those of you out there that just kinda of wanna see all the steps. All right, so here is our first step. So now we can go ahead and handle this. Again, we have to focus on what is inside of the uh, parentheses first. In other words, we've got to do all this uh, work until we get this down to one value. All right, so we have negative 8 plus negative 2 minus 8 times 1. And 8 times 1, of course, is 8. And we're not done yet, but we're getting there. We have negative 8 plus negative 2 minus 8 divided by 1 uh, divided by negative 2. Now, in real life, quote unquote, uh, for those of you that are, you know, math students or, you know, pretty good at math, you could simplify some of this stuff. I'm kind of dragging this out a little bit just so I can keep, kind of keep a certain focus on the problem, but we could handle this, but, uh, you know, we'll handle this in just one second, but let's go to continue on. And what I'd like you to do, if you don't mind, is just to hit that subscribe button. I definitely need your support to continue to grow this YouTube channel. Right now, it's not looking too good in terms of math proficiency. Um, you know, I, I get a lot of um, math news, you know, I track it, and uh, the proficiency exams in many countries are going down, uh, particularly in the United States. That's not good, okay? And of course, the demand for technology or the understanding of technology is going up. And of course, the technology that we use to learn math is going up, uh, but our proficiency is going down. So what is going on here, right? This is like, this doesn't make sense. Well, I'll tell you what, this is my little two cents, and then of course we'll get back to this prom. My two cents is this. Listen, if you want to learn something, technology is not going to save you. What you need to do is you got to be willing to work hard. Okay, there are no shortcuts. And sometimes when you have all this technology, it's just like so easy to not immerse yourself in the concepts and to practice. But you got to work hard. And if you're having a tough time with math, please don't give up. You definitely can learn this. And beyond that, what you need is great math instruction 
fully comprehensive okay, math taught in a way that you like and understand. So hopefully you have a math teacher like that. If you don't, I would love to be your math teacher. So when you hit that subscribe button, it's like I gained a new student. And if you're going to do that, you might as well hit that notification bell as well. Okay, so let's move back to this problem. And uh, let's focus in on the uh, parentheses because we're not done here. So we have negative 8 plus negative 2. I can just drop these parentheses around this negative 2 that I had right here because there was nothing to do here. So that's okay. You, you don't have to keep those parentheses there. You really need those parentheses when you first plug in those values. Uh, minus uh, plus negative 8. Let's go back over here and make sure we understand this part. Okay, so we have minus 8, but this is the same thing as plus a negative 8. Okay. So hopefully you're with me here. Now we have all these negative numbers. So negative 8 plus negative 2 is negative 10 plus a negative 8 is negative 18. Again, we're doing this without the aid of a calculator. And we're getting pretty close to the answer. So we have negative 18. Finally, we are done. So what operations do we have left? Well, if you look here, we have division and we have multiplication. So we have to continue to reference our PEMDAS and PEMDAS tells us what? Well, we finish with parentheses. Although we have numbers inside of parentheses, there's, nothing, uh, there's no operations to do in there. Uh, e stands for exponents or powers, so there's nothing there. So we're down to multiplication and division. So what do we see first from left to right? We see division first. Okay, so this is what we need to do. Negative 18 divided by negative 1. All right, so uh, now this right here... If you uh, multiplied, you could still get the right answer, okay, because you got lucky because this is a negative one. But a lot of students make uh, errors when it comes to the order of operations, uh, namely because this uh, step right here between multiplication and division, they think that, oh, you always have to do multiplication first and then division. That's not the way it works. It's whatever you see first from left to right. Okay, so we're almost done. Negative uh, 18 divided by a positive one, pretty straightforward stuff. That's negative 18, and now we're gonna take that negative 18 and multiply by negative two. A uh, negative times a negative is a positive, so negative 18 times a negative two is a positive 36. Okay, now, of course, you could just plug all these values into your calculator and get the right answer, and even doing that, a lot of students will get this wrong because they're just you know impatient. Math is a game. Well, it's not a game, but uh, it's it's a skill that involves focus. Okay, and if you're having a tough time, you have to find a way to focus. Okay, focus is key. So try to do math in a place where you're not being distracted. You know, put your cell phone away and just focus on one problem at a time and uh, one step of the solution at a time. Okay, and there's nothing wrong with getting any problem, uh, you know, incorrect. The key is if you write out all the steps and you have some sort of uh, solution, you know, that's, you know, well written out, you could be like, oh, I don't understand this. This is where I made my error. Or if your teacher points out, this is where you got this wrong. If you fix this, well, then you'll be able to get the rest of the problem right. That's the key. That's why you need to be neat in math. You just don't want to be like, oh, here is the problem. Here is my solution. Well, I don't really know what you uh, don't know, and neither do you. Okay. All right. So hopefully this little video helps you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.